Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to The Locker Room today. I'm Alan Locker, and I grew up watching As the World Turns and Guiding Light. I joined the PR department there in 1907 and remained working there for 13 years before the shows went off the air. As I was stuck here in quarantine, I realized that I was missing my Springfield family and thought some of you might be feeling the same way too. We've got a great show today, uh, a great group of actors. I think they're pretty excited. They've been um, I found out that they were texting each other just before the show, so uh, I think they were all excited to see each other as well. We have Mark Duran, who played AC Mallet, Morgan England, who played Dylan Lewis, Melissa Hayden, who played Bridget Reardon, Kimberly Sims, who played Mindy Lewis, and Jocelyn Seagraves Kundukos, if I pronounced that right, Julie Camaletti. So let's say hello to everybody. Mark. Yo. Melissa. Hey. Morgan. Hey. Jocelyn. Kimberly. Hi. Duke Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks for uh, joining me today. How's everybody hanging in? <laughs> Living in a dream. That didn't take long, Morgan. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? That didn't take long at all. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> <Jeez>. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh when was the last time some of you, uh, Mark, you, you actually tell, if you don't mind, do you want to share the story you said, what Morgan said to you? Oh. oh. <laughs> well, yeah, you, you, you put that, uh, that you know, collage of uh, the five of us on social media, and next evening I got a text from Morgan, and he goes, oh, my God, you're bald. <laughs> I, I can't tell you what I wrote back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good friend. Well, yeah. Good friend. Yeah. Always what? been supportive. When he may be bald, but he worked longer than all the rest of us. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> right? <laughs> Until recently. He worked smarter, not harder. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's good. Kim, your, your baby is so cute, Kim. Oh, I love her. Thank you. She's four months. Oh. When was the last time some of you uh, got to see each other last? Has it been... Decades? No. Me and Joss, right, Joss? At the, um, you know. the Emmys, I, I remember seeing Melissa at the Emmys, at the, not, like that 70th anniversary, or that big party. Well, that, that must yeah. have been 10 years ago, though. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? Uh, my yeah. daughter was home by then, so I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I saw Morgan sing in LA. Mark, I gosh, since I stayed with you guys after the earthquake. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. you must have some stories there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of the fans are saying none of you have aged, so that's always nice to hear. Wow, oh, thanks. Glasses. Not true. Yeah, right back at you. <laughs> yeah. and, and Donna just said, what a cute baby dog, Kimberly. Oh, thank you. I'm letting her go uh, take a nap with my daughter. Oh, oh nice. And Morgan Allison says, I absolutely loved you as Dylan um, on Guiding Light. And I follow you on Facebook and love whenever you sang on the show. Um, so speaking of Guiding Light, we'll start with you, Mark. Do you remember the first day? I can't remember the first year. <laughs> show, I'm not kidding. I, I saw a clip the other way. Last, this guy sent me a buddy, Matt, who I'm going to do something for. Matt Press, he sent me a, a clip of something me and Zaz were doing with Beverly McKenzie. And, we had this guy tied up, and I don't remember any of it. I mean, it was good work. No. I, I really, I don't, I remember, I remember I, I came on, before I got the job, I was on, I, my first really good gig was I was on Young and the Restless for eight, nine months, and I played a killer. I played a really bad guy, and that's the same network as Guiding Light. So three months later, I book Guiding Light, and no one liked me. They didn't believe I was a good guy because I was such what a bad guy. I loved you. Well, you you were special, but like the viewers weren't supposedly <laughs> taken to me, and so so um, they had me. Uh, Beth Chamberlain's character was pregnant, and I was investigating a murder or something, and so they had me. She goes into labor. They had me drive her to the hospital, and we have a car accident. We're stuck in a snowbank, and I have to sing to her to keep her calm. Oh Jesus! Yeah, and they did all this just so it, looked, you, it showed my character as a nice guy. Mm -hmm. I was freaking out because. I don't sing like Morgan. And um, the day we were shooting it, 
there was a bomb scare. I don't know if you guys remember this. There was a bomb scare in the yeah. building, and we all had to go outside, and it was like a Friday. And, and our director, I can't remember what it was, he goes, we're not, this is 1990. I don't know, but he goes, we're not shooting today. I'm not bringing my actors back in there. So I had to sit on it for another weekend. I was losing my mind. I just was so worried about, about doing the scene, but you know, it worked out. And did, now you, I career. did you screen test with Beth Ellers? No, did I they, screen uh, test with this little blonde in the corner. Oh, nice, with Kimberly. Yeah. So our storyline was supposed to be together. They, they were gonna pair um, Mindy and Mallet. And then somebody asked me, like in an interview, why didn't that ever happen? Well, I thought we were great, but I think um, they were deciding when they were um, they were negotiating with Vincent to come back, and they were deciding between putting him with with Beth or with with Mindy or Harley. And I guess they switched the characters. Yeah, because we had a lot they, of story they, in the beginning. They bed swapped. Yeah. They what? <laughs> they bed. They bed swapped. They bed swap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Kimberly, do you remember your first day? Oh, yours my gosh. Was the, yours was the wedding, right? I was such a mess. <laughs> yes, that huge wedding out of town, like a... Like a um, Cross a Creek, Reva and Josh. Reva and yeah, Josh, Josh and Reva's first. wedding, and everyone yeah. knew everyone, and I was just walking in blind, and I was a mess. That was but it was great. Day. It was a great way to get to know everyone. Yeah, Morgan, that was her first day, their, their on-location wedding. That's crazy. Were you were you <laughs> at that wedding, Morgan? Yeah, that was, he like was. my first day too. That, <laughs> and that's where I met Vince. That was your first day too? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet you met Vince that day. Yeah, you I sure he did. <laughs> I met I met Vince too. <laughs> Yeah, he was <laughs> I, it took me a minute to figure out who you were talking about. <laughs> oh my god, oh, he, was, he was the greatest man. Please, greatest I can't man. think of his last name. Vince Williams. Um, Vince Williams. Williams. Yes, yeah. who played Hamp? Yeah. yeah, Vince Williams who played Hamp. And wow. he was my roommate for five and a half years. So Love. Oh wow. Yeah. That Didn't was that. so. What a Kimberly, right? What a great way to start the show. Like up there in upstate New York, it was just beautiful springtime. Yes. It was unbelievable. It was beautiful. And if you did any work, you know, it was kind of like, for me, like just a job, like where you're going on, you're on location, but then you're sort of like, wait, these people have a huge history together. And for me, replacing someone, everyone kind of checking you out, feeling you out, but they were, it was a very warm welcome. It was a fun start. You're right. It's a, it's, I mean, especially that wedding is so iconic. So yes. even when they show clips, you're both of you were always <laughs> included in those. Melissa, do you remember your first day? Um, I do. I do. I remember I was terrified. Uh, I was super worried about remembering all those lines. Um, I had done General Hospital before, but I had never had like a big storyline. So I never had tons and tons of material to memorize or anything. Um, and I got in like two hours early and people were looking at me weird because I was so early. And um, But my first day, my first scene was um, they had two cops throw me through Aunt Maureen's front door. Because I <laughs> that was my nice. big entrance. Nice. Yeah, I had on like 40 pounds of makeup. <laughs> Great and entrance. My, my hair blow dried and exactly blow dried and, and hot rollered within an inch of its life and then teased and it was <laughs> and David Loveless. Do you guys remember David Loveless? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> we found this uh bustier that had peace signs over the boobs. And so that's what I was wearing. <laughs> <laughs> was like a pair of cut-off jean shorts. It was crazy. Absolutely. I, I think I think David went on to work for Joan Rivers for many years. If Did I'm not he? Mistaken. I think so. Oh. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I might, was somebody, somebody might, somebody might tell me that on the side. Um, really? Jocelyn, do you remember yours? Well, I do because I got to meet my big brother, Tony. I just saw that Everybody clip. Is like, that you getting out of the limo? That's yeah. Cool. I just saw the clip. Because, uh, and Jocelyn, didn't you start like within weeks of me? I think we yeah. started. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, you were you were so friendly. You came up to me like I'm new too. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, I met Tony. Um, I remember Francesca's father had kidnapped me to get back at Tony AC Mallet. As but we did. were 
Yeah, as, as is done all the time. <laughs> um, but we were on location in Brooklyn Heights, I remember. And, oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I, rem I remember because I did, had no idea how it all worked. So I didn't realize like we were shooting two episodes and my first episode, it was just like that clip of me getting out and seeing my big brother. So of course, you know, when it came time to air and everything, I told everybody I'd ever met in my entire life and they sat through the entire show. And then the last scene, it was like, I opened the door. Tony? And everybody was like, great, great part. <laughs> That's great. Jocelyn, while, while we're on you, Alex Johnson uh, said, Jocelyn's wedding is one of the most beautiful weddings I've ever been to. Oh, that's so sweet. Hi, Alex. Oh, my God. It was really fun. Oh, because Alex. It was a Greek wedding, so it was, you know. Of course. It lasted three days. Yeah. Just like the Coopers on uh, Guiding Light. Hi, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, Mark, I think you mentioned it earlier. Hi, somebody, Alex. Somebody did. Beverly McKenzie. Uh, what was it like, Kimberly, Mark, working with Beverly? Go ahead. Go ahead, Kimberly. Kimberly, Kimberly were you nervous? Do you want to start? Nervous? Go ahead. You, uh, Do you want us to go? I mean, yeah, yeah, you, you go. Kimberly. Well, oh, thank you. Um, I think that storyline, I was, I've, I've been able, first of all, I wanted to say thank you for doing this because it's such a, so much fun to reconnect with everyone. And then I've watched a few other, I'm enjoying catching up with everyone. It's been, Oops. So nice. Thank you, Alan. You're welcome. I, I thought about it. I've heard a lot of low. You know, I was this ingenue, and I, that, that storyline, Mindy, what do they call those starts. triangles? Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, the triangle with Roger and Alex. Yeah, it was a point. So I was so fortunate to work with those two. They, they, they make you so up. much better. They make you so well, much better. Is that what you said? <laughs> hey, Kimberly, we're having trouble hearing you at the moment. Uh, <clears throat> so, Mark, why don't you tell us working? You got to work with Beverly. Well, you know, well, I mean, right? in the beginning, uh, I, yeah, okay. I worked with both of them a good amount, but uh, the, um, in the beginning, um, Beverly, um, I mean, I was intimidated. She's such a powerful actress. She was, and uh, and uh, she just, she held sway. She was the one. Whenever there was, an, we used to get rumors all the time about cancellation, whatever, all this stuff, and I would always go straight to her and ask her what was going on, and if she didn't know, she'd go find out, but most of the time <laughs> she knew. But I had a I had a personal relationship with her. I, I used to joke around that I dated her because we would go out to dinner um a decent amount and uh and uh and you know I, I just would take her out and she she used to always say to me, goes, you know, you're the only one who ever buys me dinner. I have to pay for everyone all the time. <laughs> you know, she was that matriarch and I enjoyed it. I mean, I, um she had an uh, incredible life, you know. So I'd hear I mean, just being in her apartment and seeing the old pictures and what a stunning woman she was and you know, in the '60s, she lived with James Earl Jones. What? Yes. Get out. I, yeah, in the '60s, and so it just showed how progressive she was, and just uh, an, an amazing, amazing woman. And to work with her, I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I look forward to it, but I'd be nervous until the scene really got going. She was that strong. I'd okay, be shocked I need if. Stories. What's that? I need stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she. She has, there's a gentleman, I uh, can't think of his name. Up Can top. you hear me better now, Alan? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I lied. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Should I go away? No. No. no I want to tell my Beverly story. Yeah. Right. Um, do you want to try your daughter's phone, maybe? Kimberly? All right. I'm sorry, everybody. You know, it's the internet. Um, so favorite storylines. Um, Shirley was asking one of the fans a favorite storyline. Okay. Melissa? Oh, Jesus, really? Sorry. Keep yeah. talking. Um, I don't 
No, I mean, the one that stands out the most just because it went on forever was the one where I was pregnant and I was hiding. What's her, her, what's her name was pretending. Nadine. Nadine was pretending to be pregnant. And then Vanessa found out that I was pregnant and I'm hiding in the attic and it just never and then more and then maureen died while you were in the attic that's oh that's right yeah yeah yeah. oh my god and yeah. <laughs> i saw on buffy yeah. said, well, i mean that 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 that's only what can happen on so of course <laughs> one's laughing buffy sent me a clip of morgan jocelyn and i and it was their wedding and then i came in and slapped jocelyn do yeah. you know, I have absolutely no recollection of any of that I don't remember any of it. Isn't that weird? I was going to say that was my favorite. Oh, really? What? What about you, Morgan? No, I was going to say it's so it's so like Mark was saying earlier. You just you have no memory of some of this stuff. That you, I know. Be, Bring your mic closer, you closer Morgan. Like, no. Yeah, come all. closer to the mic, Morgan. No, come it's not that. The, it's just, yes, it is a little. Are you yeah. sure? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's no, better. No. That's Come better. closer to the light, then. Try that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. Uh, I don't know why this is not working. Hang on. Or you guys just do whatever. Jocelyn. Yeah, I I love yeah. that storyline because you know, in the beginning, I mean, it was like the most exciting thing that would happen was that I would drop my bracelet and Hart would find it, you know, and that went on for like six months. So by the time we got to the wedding and the juicy stuff, I was in heaven and it was like, oh my gosh, there was so much upheaval and there, everything was changing day to day. And I'm pretty sure I walked by somebody on the street in New York and they were like, you're a bad girl, Julie. <laughs> That's so like, funny. Yay. <laughs> and Edward, Edward was asking, um, how did it feel to take Julie from the good girl to the bad girl? It was so much fun. I mean, it was really, that was my favorite thing to do, I mean, for sure. Although it did kind of make it like a little scary, like, you know, to have Melissa have to slap me and we'd have to sort of be confrontational. And I think, you know, there were a couple of scenes like that, that, you know, you just feel a little like, oh God, this is so weird. You know, <laughs> we have to fight. Eh, another day at work. Yeah. <laughs> for um, you, but, but I, was, I was new at that. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Melissa mentioned Buffy, which was Brian Buffington for anybody who um, was unsure. And he just sent a text saying hello to everybody. Oh, hey, <laughs> Brian. What's up? Oh, my gosh. So Brian just said hello. His mom, too, Rita. She was amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. His mom, Rita, was great. Yeah. I don't know what mic I'm I think it's better at the mic, Morgan. Yeah. Back up, Mark. Oh, it's better here? Yeah. 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 All right. I just don't know why it, I'm not getting any sound really. So, oh well, whatever. But you guys can hear me, okay? Yeah. We can. It's right. a we little can. Loud, but whatever. So, who um, took you on this path of acting? You know, what um, is there a person or a moment in your life that took you down this road, Morgan? Um. Well, I was never going to be an actor because my mother was an actress and I, you know, everyone told me all my life, oh, you should get her to put you in a this or that. I'm just like, no, I just, those weren't my values. So, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it wasn't until I was playing football in, in Colorado and they, I had had a ruptured kidney and they decided uh, my football career was over. And uh, man, I, I mean, at that level, you're just, that's who you are, you know? So that was a big blow, but uh friend of mine talked me into taking this acting class with him and I took it and I just sucked on my first monologue. But then I saw this, uh, the next person caught up and she started putting all this stuff on stage and creating this whole world. And by the end time she was done, you know, we're all on the edge of her seat w wondering what she's going to do. And she just did this amazing scene. And, uh, it was after, it was after that, that I realized that this person was on the same stage I was on and, what she did with it and what I did with it, you know, like it just real, I just realized, you know, you could create this whole world. And um, so then I did my next piece and it was, and I just felt like it was in my blood. So That's I great. Mark? followed it. Me? 
Yeah. Yeah, I was the one who was up before him in that scene. It wow. wasn't a woman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went, I did a weird route. I, I got kicked out of college for being uh, the funniest guy in class. And, uh, <laughs> and then I was in construction for eight years. So I started taking acting classes when I was like 25, 26 from a gentleman who helped change my life. And uh, when I turned 27, I got a one-way ticket to come out to LA and try to not be a carpenter and be an actor and just started from scratch and, you know, was lucky. And um, I came out in 87 and less than three years later, I booked the, the uh, Young and the Restless thing. And so I just, I was trying to get on a soap because my mentor would had, he, he recurred for years on all my children. And uh, his name is Michael LaGuardia. I don't know if you guys watch that show, but uh, anyway, he, um, I, I, I've been on this, I went to the set once with him and I thought at my age, <clears throat> you gotta get thrown in the deep end and see how you respond, you know, in terms of pressure. And like everyone's talked about how nerve wracking can be the, your first week or so on the show. So I just got on it and uh, I, I, I was in such a big storyline. I was working like crazy. So I just kind of learned on the fly. That's, That's it. amazing. Josh? Mine, um, I just, after college, I was like, what do I do now? And I thought, I'm going to go try this acting thing. Um, and I just, you know, really had fun with it. I, it kind of started to fall into place. And um, I had sort of been prepping to be a writer. So after, you know, having my second kid and a long, you know, many years of acting, I just kind of decided to shift back towards writing. So that's more what I'm focused on now. But I love it. And, and Melissa? Oh, wow. So I was in tap class, tap dancing, and uh, there was an audition for a movie called Pennies from Heaven, and they needed a bunch of kids who could tap dance. And so I went audition mostly because it was a free tap lesson. I was reading about that. That's amazing. And um, and I got the job. And then one of the girls from that, and so I worked on that for a month. with Bern I was with Bernadette Peters every day for a month. How old were you? 13. And then one of the girls from that um, was like, hey, there's an audition this weekend for this movie. They're doing a movie of Annie. You should come, you should come. And I was like, nah, I don't want to go. And they're like, no, you should totally come. Like a bunch of us are going. Oh, okay. And it'll be a free dance class. Okay, I'll go. I was all about the free dance class apparently. And I went on that and I got cast in that too, which was crazy. And John Houston directed it. And I spent three months on that set and I got to watch Carol Burnett, Albert Finney, Tim Curry working. Um, and I, that was it. I was mass. I was just in love. I was in love with the whole process. I actually wanted to be the script supervisor so that I could sit <laughs> right next to the director and know everything. And, <laughs> it's a great and, way to learn. Oh my God. It was fantastic. And I got really lucky because I would go sneak up onto where the, uh, video villages, where the producer and director and all them sit, um, it's within the sound stage. That's the hot set. That's the video village. So um, what I used to do is I would sneak up there all the time and they always had the monitor pointed towards this old guy. And so I'd go stand behind his shoulder and the old guy was John Houston. I didn't know who he was apart from that. He would say things and people would do them. And, um, you know, one day he actually, this is, this was like my life. He, Kevin and now Finney were having a hard time with one of the scenes. It was little girls and they were in the office and they were having trouble with some of the blocking. And John Houston turns to me and he goes, what do you think, baby? And I said, well, if he's saying that to me, I sure wouldn't be sitting down. I'd be getting up and trying to walk away. And he goes, Carol, dear, will you try something for me? And it's in the movie. They did it. That's, like, That's amazing. Like, and it was such a huge lesson for someone who has actual like esteem about what they're doing and a professional and they're not afraid to take other people's opinions and they're, you know what I mean? And it really held me a good stead for the rest of my career. And then after that, it was like, you know, we had casting people, um, somebody called here, a casting director and was like, look, mom, I can't cast her in another thing 
she doesn't have an agent yet. Come on, you got to get pictures. You got to like all the stuff that everybody does before you get a job. And so I finally was like, look, mom, I've been working and I have money. So I'll hire someone if you don't want to go. <laughs> if you don't want to drive me, I'll hire a driver. And she's like, okay, fine. We'll do this. And, and then we were in. So that's amazing. <laughs> Morgan, you mentioned uh, your mom earlier. Uh, fans were asking, for those who don't know, Morgan's mom is Cloris Leachman. Um, how's your mom doing? And talk about growing up with Cloris as, as a mom. Uh, okay. But first I want to say, while you were talking, Melissa, I, um, I really, you're one of the most courageous actors that I've worked with or that I've seen. And it's really um, incredible. So, my mom, um, um, my mom's good. She's 94. I mean, she's, uh, she's hanging wow. in there. Um, that is amazing. She just, uh, some got into her and she, uh, she has trouble walking even. She's pretty weak right now, but she, she walked down the back stairs, took her, uh, her, her walker. It's got uh, wheels on it and there's a long dirt path that goes down to a little bridge and she could decides to go down the the path she makes it all the way and hits the bridge and just took a header and she uh. her arm and she was all smashed up so it was just brutal and uh, uh. that was about a month and a half ago so she's doing a lot better now and oh, she's good. just so tough man but how was growing up with her do you want the real truth I mean, I never saw her. No. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I barely ever saw her. And uh, I pretty much raised myself. And I mean, I was hitching to high to school at 11 years old. And, um, you know, I there was no buddy around. I had three older brothers. They uh, kind of gave me some boundaries. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was football that, that really kind of um, – put everything together you know it gave me the stuff that i i didn't have like father figure uh, a, a family that you know so so those are the early years but what's cool and i was going to say this um about my mom um is that when i started doing guiding light she was doing plays and stuff but she she was watching me and we really that was the time in my life where we really developed a relationship we had a language you know that was our own and um i really it was an incredible time because I really hadn't been able to connect with her before that. So period. <laughs> Welcome back, Kimberly. That stinks. I'm sorry. I have terrible that's, internet where I live. That's okay. So we're, I'm going to ask you to repeat your Beverly and, and Michael Zaslow stories because they, we couldn't hear you at that time. Okay. Thanks. You can now. So you, you asked if um, I was intimidated. And so, <laughs> so I think, um, well, I, I guess I started working with Michael first, right? So I started the Mindy uh, Rogers storyline that was supposed to be just a one-time love scene. Pam Long was writing it. She didn't like it for the character. People didn't like that pairing. But for me personally, working with him and that whole arc with, with Alex, Mindy, Roger, and that whole triangle, really took the character for me gave made her so much more multifaceted and complex and um it was also my Good. one of probably my favorite storyline like a turning point for me and it was um you know kind of like going to school they great actors like that they make you better and i did hear part of mark's story about beverly and yes she had the best stories and i don't know mark if you said this you were saying she lived with james earl jones right yeah. That's Mark. a story I never heard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, like in the 60s. Can you hear me? Am I alone? <laughs> yeah, nope. Yeah. We hear you. Kimberly froze. Oh, is that it? Okay. Oh, yeah. God. I thought we all froze because uh, Mark didn't move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kimberly, if you hear us, uh, definitely sign back in. Um, Looks like a headshot. It does look like a headshot. Um, oh John, God, you guys, I miss you. Kimberly, you froze for a minute. Okay, my last um, favorite um, Beverly story. I heard Mark talking about James Earl Jones. I don't know if you heard that. Um, it, she used to audition 
with Marilyn Monroe. She, she did? did? Wow. Did she go up she, against her? Yes. And she said that, you know, Marilyn Monroe would go in there and she and she and Beverly said that she was too like together and tell it, you know, she sort of went in there. She was very, she very bright, educated, intelligent woman. And she said that Marilyn would just go in there, you know, just working it. But she, yeah, I, I loved that story. And I loved working with her son. He was one of my favorite directors. Yeah, Scott, Scott, good job. Scott McKenzie, yep. Yeah. Um, that story for you, Kimberly, you know, it, it just brought in so many other people too, like your dad, um, you know. what? T talk about, for both you and Morgan, talk about, uh, Jordan Clark. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to find him. I can't find the guy. I don't know. One of a kind. <laughs> I I have his number, Morgan. I'll send oh, it great, to you. Great. Awesome. Um, One of a kind. And man, talk about somebody making you better. My scenes with him. Mm, I had a lot of good heart, heart to heart. So I actually watched a few things to get caught up a little bit. And, um, and, and let me inter let me interrupt for one second. While you're talking about Jordan, I'd be remiss. Also, talk about Larry Gates as well, since you both got to work with HB. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, and the most amazing, amazing man. He he did an appearance or something in Florida and got together with my dad one time and brought him like jam from where he lived and um, <laughs> so. <laughs> really extraordinary and I wish I have I wish I would have had more scenes he was really semi-retired when I came on he um I, I didn't get to work with him a ton but every time you worked with him you were in you know we worked with some amazing really amazing top professionals it was an extraordinary opportunity we were very lucky yeah, yeah. you all you all did Morgan do you have stories about Jordan and Larry <laughs> you mean that I could tell in public? No. <laughs> be nice. Be nice to both. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. oh god! I mean, you know, Jordan was amazing to work with. But like you said, Kimberly, with Zaslow, we did uh, we did Cyrano together. It was just the amount, the the talent of the and the um, the talent of the people that we worked with, and and the the commitment to to their art. It was incredible, you know. Everybody was stage actor. It was no. I listening to stories. I barely even knew Beverly, you know. But the people that I worked with were just so, just right on, amazing. Um, Larry, uh, I, you know, he was the matriarch or the patriarch of the family. We didn't have. He was a great guy, um, and uh, but Jordan, uh, he was my father, my brother. Uh, you know, we spent time uh, out in Fire Island at his place. And um, he's just an incredible guy. I loved working with him and um, love him to death. So. And, and your mama while we're at it? Uh, my Kim, Kimberly? Kim Zimmer. Kim Zimmer. <laughs> yeah, she was awesome. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she, you talk about somebody keeping you on your toes. I mean, she <laughs> 40 pages of dialogue a day. I mean, just, just like this, you know, the whole page, one after another. It was just incredible to see what she could do. Um, and working off her, working off each other, um, all of you, you know, that was what was so, and like, um, sorry to get off topic, but um, like in dry rehearsal, you know, I would, I would learn my, I would look at my lines for the next day, but I wouldn't commit anything because I knew once I got in there, you know, once I'm working off Melissa or, um, or anybody, anyone that I was working with, you know, they were going to give me, give me stuff that was going to fuel my character and what I was going to do. So. Um, so it's like exciting every day to work with, with the people I work with. And, and Mark, uh, I did a show last week with the Coopers and I, I don't know what my question was, but I guess we were all laughing and Beth Ellers brought up about you and Frank DeCopolis being the biggest crack up on set. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that goes to Michael O'Leary. Sorry. Well, O'Leary, well, that, yeah. Yeah. First of all, O'Leary's one of the funniest He's guys. A whole level. Yeah. He's never yeah. been on set. That guy yeah. Yeah. was Pete, so difficult in the beginning Pete. to work with that guy. He's also one of the cheapest guys ever. Wow. <laughs> go out go out to eat with that guy. Yeah. His his he'll pockets are so that. deep and he'll also finish your salad for you. So <laughs> But O'Leary was hysterical, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah me and Frank, there's imitations. Me and Frank yeah, are there really pranks well. that you remember? Are there pranks that you uh, remember? Well, there's one in particular. On? I, there's this one in particular. We were, my character was secretly seeing uh, Harley, right? Just in the beginning. And we didn't, no one knew. And me and him were at the diner sitting at a booth. And I was taking, I was about to eat something, and he he said something like, "What's going on with you and my sister?" And it's the end of the scene. So the next scene starts with me holding my fork, and I'm looking at him. So we're standing there waiting, and I remember well because Joanne Sedgwick was directing, and she was awesome, but she could also be tough, you know. And I'm like this, and they're going five, four, and I look at him, I go, "Watch what I do," right? <laughs> and I see his eyes get really big, <laughs> and so they go, oh. and I just look at him, and I drop the fork on the plate. And he looked at me, and Frank's a terrific guy and a good actor, but he didn't like leaving the script. No, yeah. he just cut it off. He'd usually uh -oh. stop when you you, you might you get make it some magic here. Let's keep going. We got it. Oh my god! And so he he starts laughing, and <laughs> it made me start laughing, and then the crew started laughing, and we couldn't stop, and we were crying, and I'm going pinch the part of your thigh inside your thigh, just pinch it, <laughs> like try to stop it. And you got yelled at, right? Well, we thought I'm like she's gonna. She's gonna kill us. Yeah. And then she opened up the mic and she goes, she's laughing so hard. She goes, it hurts. So <laughs> thank God they were all laughing. But I swear to God, for one scene, then we had to get up. And every time we I go, don't look at me in the eye. Like look at my nose or my forehead. <laughs> it, it was a, it was an embarrassment. It, it had to take, you know, half an hour to shoot like a two-minute scene. Oh, that was terrible. the worst when you would start laughing so hard you couldn't stop. I would yeah. always get yelled at. Oh. Hey, was Justin Dees in that thing you did? With he the was, yes. How's he, he doing? Was. Oh, he's doing great. Awesome. Justin was he's, great. He's one of the he's one of the most powerful guys I ever worked with, and and he's also sick out of his mind. Like the three of us would uh, do pranks on each other, and we set up this water thing in his in his room, and so when he opened the door, he got it landed on his head. And so I was I was in the hallway on the phone because you know that's all we had back then. And he and Frank's room was right by the phone. I knew Frank was sitting on his desk in 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 wardrobe. Just walks by with a huge bucket of water. Like that's what he's like, going. Like, Where are you going? And he just the whole thing right on Frank. He told that story, Mark. Yeah. He told the story. That, that's I mean, probably I mean, where it was that's probably where said Beth said that you two were pranksters. That's probably where yeah, we had, that you two. We had rubber band guns. We would hide on people and scare them. Like we were just stupid too. I, in my ceiling, and it could still be there. We had these those high powered water guns. Oh, I remember. Which we, yeah, so and we got them to combat Justin D. <laughs> yeah. But he was he was crazy. Oh, he, I saw him once we were on set and he went up on a line, he was frustrated, so he went ah! and he like like punched the wall. He moved the whole set. The crew had to come out and bring it back because it misaligned deal, you know, you know, uh, whatever the word is. But uh yeah, he was a really strong, strong dude. You, you, know, you just the building's gone. What's that? Say it again. The whole building's gone. Oh, it is. 44, 44, it is. Yeah. Oh. 44, yeah. So yeah, that is 44, they knocked it down. Yeah, wow. they knocked it down. Um, that. Mark mentioned, you know, a scene cracking up on set. Anybody else have one that stands out that you just remember? You couldn't get through it because somebody made you laugh. Who? A lot. Anybody? Anybody? Do you remember funny? It's okay if you don't. No worries. Morgan, Morgan, you were always making me laugh. I mean, <laughs> but it, it wasn't. I don't know if it was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> it probably it usually was. Oh, it was just. You were just. You know. You were always just doing like fun stuff and like you just always had such you know a whimsical like sense of humor about you that's, that's good jocelyn that's good. I, you know i didn't know this about you um we were talking about morgan's <laughs> mom talk about your parents um <laughs> famous writer yeah. correct you know yeah that my mean fa fairly i mean my dad um was a best-selling author and my mom is is an amazing writer and um very accomplished so i think the writing thing was something i was always you know sort of in your in your genes yeah aligned <laughs> to do and so the acting felt kind of like a detour but it was an amazing detour and it was a long detour <laughs> but um but that's why I've kind of, you know, gone back more towards writing. And, um, and you, you have know, one book, one book out now, and a second one on the way, or two out? 
I wish I had one book out and a second one on oh, the way. I have, <laughs> I have, I have like some stories and poems published, but I have my first book that's being shopped around, and I'm working on my second novel. So, oh, okay, that's awesome. I think wow. it takes seriously. Like, I think it takes even longer than acting. Like, I thought it would be or? easier in some ways because at least you control it. You know, you can do it. You don't have to wait for somebody to hire you to to do it. You can do it on your own, but then you have to go out and sell it. So it just, uh, you know, takes a long time. But Take, takes time, just just like the acting. Joss, is just it, like uh, the acting. Is it um, fiction or nonfiction, or what's what are you writing? It is fiction. It's fiction. It's kind of like um, you know something that hopefully women would read in book clubs. I'll send you a copy, Morgan. You'll love it. Yeah, I would love a copy. <laughs> Jocelyn, I would love I to read it. Anything. Okay. Have you ever thought about songwriting? <laughs> you know, I I think about you so much, Morgan, because I, I know you would always like preview your songs for me uh -huh. if I stopped by your dressing room and I'd, I'd be like, oh, I wonder if you could do this and this and you'd make me feel really smart. Like, that's a good idea. I have no idea. Like, I have no musical ability whatsoever. But you were very nice about it. Um, but what's funny is my daughter, my eight, older daughter, who's 18, is into songwriting now. So she's not as nice to me. She's just like, no, I, I, don't, I don't want your feedback. <laughs> she doesn't say it's great, great ideas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Melissa and Jocelyn, can you talk? You, you had, Melissa had three, Melissa's I believe. And, and Jocelyn, no, no, she's there. Um, I'm about worried. your your men, your heart, Jeff Phillips, and then Leonard oh, no. Bob, oh, and then gosh. and then you, Melissa, had Frank Grillo that you worked with. I don't know right. if Jocelyn did as well. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, but I, but I let's start say. with Jeff Phillips. Well, you worked with Jeff more than I did, Joss, so you take him. Go. Yeah, so Jeff, um, Jeff was like, so I always thought of him as kind of like a, a young cowboy, like he had that real sort of like, I, I mean, I don't even think he was from the, the West Jersey or anything. Jersey cowboy. He's from yeah. Jersey. <laughs> exactly. But he had that vibe to him, which was always he did a He did a Western after that. A Hoboken Western. Yeah. Did he, he was really? on a Western. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. Wild. So, um, but you know, I, I mean, he was great, but I was very close to Leonard who, who replaced him. And, you know, as everyone knows, Leonard had that, horrible hang gliding accident. Um, and that was sort of the, you know, the culmination of all those storylines. I mean, that was happening off screen while all the wedding stuff was happening and all the crazy stuff. So even though that was my favorite part of the show, um, story-wise, off screen, it was, you know, this terrible tragedy with Leonard. And um, he's, you know, he's okay. And he's, had a lot of damage and he's um had to have you know care since then but we kept in touch and i know mike you saw him didn't you a couple years ago me yeah yeah oh yeah yeah um yeah i saw him i can't i can't remember her name she was another actress but she kind of grace grace phillips yeah yeah and uh and his nurse uh who he had forever remember who pretty much brought him in to her house judy she had yeah. retired Mm -hmm. And so I went down and saw him where he was staying. Um, I think it was in Orange County. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's the whole thing's so tragic. He looked terrific, but he, and he's a happy man, but he was such an incredible person. I mean, first of all, he was an Adonis, you know, and just with, didn't have an air about him. He was a, he was a great actor. He was one of the nicest guys. Um, it was, it, that, that was so tragic. Do you remember his dog, Girl? He found yeah. his dog. He found a dog in the subway. And he goes, come here, girl. And the thing followed him everywhere. It never was leashed. The dog wow. was so obsessed with him. And I, I lived in a building where you couldn't bring animals in. And so we stuck girl in his, he had this massive backpack for his hand gliding stuff. We stuck the dog in his backpack. He slung it over the thing. We just walked through the lobby into my park. Like, the dog was so cool. They didn't care about any of those things. But um, yeah, Leonard, Leonard had, was a really special guy. He, he, life was treating him really well. I mean, I know he, he, had, he was his a, family, his sister, and then you know, but unbelievably tragic. Yeah, uh, somebody was asking. He was injured in a hand gliding accident. Yeah, um, and he said, by the great, way, he used to take the dog up with him. Oh, and wow. that was the first question when I got the call. Like I was like, "Where's girl?" Because you know he had a harness made up for her, so she she flew with him. 
but he thankfully she wasn't with him that day. Yeah. He, um, he was a great heart. He was a great heart. Yeah. And then we had um, a, a brief, so, so like an emergency fill in for him was Sean um, McDermott. Sean McDermott, and he was so talented. I had seen him in Miss Saigon on Broadway yeah. before that, and I was and like, they had come, he was doing Miss Saigon on Broadway, so he'd be doing the show at night and then come to us in the morning. And um, when Betty told me that she had hired the new guy, um, he had to shoot, I think, three or four shows the next day. Wow. And, um, and do a show that night on Broadway, you know. <laughs> you do. Melissa, and, do you have headphones? Do you have yeah, headphones? Melissa, your he headphones might work better for you. A lot now. Of feedback. Okay, sorry. Here, let me put them in. That's okay. Is that better? Yes. You guys hearing me better yeah. now? Okay, good. So um I asked Betty Ray to give him my phone number and he called me and I said, Look, I'm gonna show up two hours early. Come meet me at the studio. We'll go through don't worry, D just read through all the information read through all the scripts, don't stress out, and meet me early and I'll help you get through your first day. And got them organized. I was like, these three shows, and I put them away. I was like, this is the show you gotta focus on now. This is the scene you're doing first. And I just sort of walked him through the whole day. It was, I, it was unbelievable how that man did that. And that was Sean you're talking about? Sean McDermott, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he was the lead in Miss Saigon. Yeah, the lead in the second. He was carrying a show on Broadway. Yeah. Wow. And then, and then, and then you worked with Frank Grillo with, with the pregnancy. No, there was or... another one after that. Um. There was another one after that. Yeah. Help me. He was found on a national uh, talent show sort of thing. He sent in a tape, which had never been heard of to self submit a tape at that point. Um, oh, I don't know who that is. I don't remember that. I mean, I sort of remember that. Alex Johnson, are you there? Yeah, somebody, <laughs> yes, you do. hold on. Mason. Mason. Alex just said Mason. Marshall Hillard. Yes, Marshall. that's it. Marshall Hillard. Yes. Now yeah. I remember. Yeah. Marshall came in for a while and he was there for a good while, maybe six months or a year. And then Frank Grillo came in. Now, by the way, have you guys seen him in like Marvel movies and stuff? He's big time. Oh, he's big time. He's this, on, guy, this guy played all these people played Hart. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Frank Frank is on Billions right now too. Is he? Currencies Current season of Billions. Um, Ellis and Janney, who played one of Beverly McKenzie's. No, one of Marge. Ginger. Dixon. No, Beverly's. Ooh. Yeah, Beverly and Marge. Yeah, Ginger. Nah. Uh, we just did the show with Fiona Hutchison, and I asked Fiona what it was like working with that. Yeah, Mark, do you have Fifi stories? <laughs> yeah, well, I, you know, yeah, I, I got to work with her a decent amount. But I, my funny story—do you remember? You guys remember Jerry, the cameraman? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah. Okay, he, this guy was such a character. <laughs> yeah. Remember that other show he was doing? What was it? The dance show. He was doing no. that like. Si okay, well, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he, he, you know, we had we had great great crew. You know, but, but uh, the, he he just stood out. He he was more involved than more camera most cameramen are. And it was the first day that Fiona was joining the show, and her name was Jenna. And I remember I was at the they had an airport um, baggage claim thing set up, and I was saying goodbye to someone. And I turn and I see her walk by, and I got one line. I just got to look and start thinking and go, Jenna, like from my past, right? <laughs> just bad, right? And so. <laughs> it's playing out. So I, I see her, I sit down on the, on the carousel thing and I'm like this and I'm thinking, and Jerry goes down below his camera and he goes, Jenna. <laughs> and I literally go, Jenna, what the fuck are you doing? He thought I forgot my lines, my line. <laughs> That's what he would do. I mean, he was, he was such a great guy, but he was so aggressive. He thought that'd be cool for to feed me my line. Me One word I needed. So funny. Kimberly, babe, you staying with us? No, we got a headshot again. Hey, Kimberly, can you hear us? Anyway, I knew Fiona too, because we worked together on, uh, she came on, I, I was on One, uh, One Life to Live a bunch of years later. And yeah. I knew her from there too. Lovely, lovely woman. The last time I, I saw her, and I think Kimberly was talking about it earlier, 
when they had that big at the Emmys, they had the big anniversary for Guiding Light, and they wanted us all to come out on stage. Yeah. And uh, I remember walking out with her and James Lipton, of all people. Yeah. He was Which on was, Guiding Light. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I didn't realize it until then, but anyway, that's it. Hey Morgan, how are your children, oh. Annabelle, Jackson, and Lucy? Oh my gosh. Uh Annabelle's killing it music wise. Um I think even during this whole pandemic thing, um, she's been singing all over the world. She's really developed a brand for herself, and she's doing amazing. Annabelle Ingram. That's awesome. Jackson uh, is just such an amazing guy. He's also doing really well in music, and they do a lot of stuff together. He's also an actor, and um, and uh, they both live with their girlfriend or boyfriend. Um, and he lives in Hollywood. She lives in Echo Park. And then my little five-year-old, Lucy... She's just incredible. She's just incredible. So um, let me tell you a quick little story about her really quick. Okay, so I'm picking her up from her mom's. We're driving to my house, and she always wants to get a toy. And I, But she promised we got two Barbies last time, and she promised no more toy the next time. <laughs> so I said, fine. So we're driving back, and she's like, you know, Dad, I was watching TV, and I saw this. They showed this thing, and this TV, and I'm, she's working me for a toy. And I'm like, look, Lucy, you promised no toy this week. And so she got all upset and everything. And I said, so I told her about reputation and building a reputation. I told her, you know, if you lie or you break your promises, you know, people aren't going to respect you and stuff. So blah, blah, blah. time went by. A couple hours later, we're playing around. She stops. She goes, Daddy, thank you for teaching me not to lie and not and to always uh, and to keep my promises. She's five oh, years old. That's it sweet. blew my mind. So oh. say again, Melissa. What? And then you get. Yeah. You gave her a toy. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and then you gave her a toy. It, oh, exactly. I'm so I'm screwed. She's got me wrapped around her finger. So Jocelyn, Morgan, and Melissa, you both were part of like this whole nah. young young group. Oh, oh, stop stop it. it. I want to buy her a toy. <laughs> know, right? How can you say no? Oh my god, that's so great. So you were all part of this young story with Nia Long and Monty. What was that like at that time and working with all of those? All you know, we were so lucky because we had this golden window where the writing was incredible. Yeah. We really did. I mean, I cannot even, I just thank my lucky stars. Those scripts that we had, woo, they were good. They were good. So yeah. many talented people. I mean, oh. It, so was, it was really a great, a great bunch. I, and also, you know, it was, I think Guiding Light was unique because it was pretty grounded in reality. I remember after I left, I went and did days for a little bit, like just for a couple months. And I remember trying to get caught up on like everything that was happening on those storylines. And it was like, and then the aliens came and that person had been thrown. <laughs> and I was like, what? So I think that's something that made Guiding Light kind of special too, is that it had, you know, some yeah. real kind of, you know, groundedness. Yeah, and we didn't have to read our lines off the teleprompter. That was that was a plus. <laughs> so, yeah. That was before your that was way before your time. <laughs> what, the teleprompter? I think so. I mean probably no, back it wasn't. In the there were a lot of shows that were that's what they did. They had yeah. the yeah. I the when I was on no, yeah, I was on Young and Restless for a little bit and they no one would it drove me crazy, but no one would rehearse phone phone calls. They would just sit there and stare at them and they had there wasn't even teleprompter, they just held cards up. Oh. Like it was a tonight show. Maybe it was and, and they would just read right off it. But we were actors. Yeah. So okay, but <laughs> well, you know what? But you know what? You're right though. I mean I used to I look I did um that for eight months. And I used to call uh, Guiding Light um, blue collar acting because the difference, in, even in your, it took 10 minutes to get to someone else's dressing room on YNR to run lines. Right. And that was just to get to the dressing room door. Like they're big, you know, and it's a massive place. Here we had these small rooms with roommates and you were there to work, you know. And like Jocelyn said, the show was written that way too. Like it was, it was, it was grounded. It was more real than I think any of the other shows, even our names. Like there wasn't any, there was a guy on One Life to Live back then. I never knew his real name, but I would see him on the Upper West Side, and I just walked by him and go, "Hey, Suede," <laughs> keep walking. <laughs> and he's like, "Who the fuck is that guy?" I'm like, "Oh, excuse me," <laughs> but I'd be like, "Suede." Hey, okay. Suede. Well, how lucky were we? I mean, Monty was an incredible actor. Yeah, yeah. such a talent. 
incredible actor. And Nia Long, my God, we were so lucky to have her for the time that we had her. She had just done like this huge movie. Yeah, and then we did another huge movie, you know? Mm -hmm. And I remember at one point she had gotten another huge movie, huge. And they wouldn't let huge. her out. Huge. Well, they huge. Had a contract for it to go do it. And so she was, you know, staying at Guiding Light. And mm -hmm. oh boy. We were really, really lucky. And I got to say also that, you know, when I, I think it was, it, if it wasn't my first day, it was within my first week or two, uh, Bill Rourke called me aside. And he played, uh, remember? Henry Chamberlain. Chamberlain, Henry Chamberlain. Ma Maeve's dad, yeah. Yeah, he, Henry he was, Chamberlain. He said, uh, Baby, come, come sit with me for a minute. And he called me into his dressing room and he said, I noticed you were a few minutes late today. We don't do that. Wow. Yeah. Um, he said, we don't do that because when you're on set, I want you to look around at all those people in the crew. And if we're five minutes late in the morning, we're going to make them late in the evening and they're not going to be able to catch their train to get home to their family. And it's not okay. We don't do that. And he well, said, fired him, didn't they? We show, he, we show up, <laughs> we know our lines. We da, da, da. Like, he read me the riot act. Wow. We but in a classy way. Oh my God, in the best you, way. It, yeah, I'm sure in a cla class act way. Oh. Melissa, speaking of some of the others, I mean, you, you know, part of the Reardon family Lisa Brown, Lee Lawson, Kurt Ellen McKinney, Parker. Ellen Parker. How lucky was oh. I to get to work with Ellen Parker? Holy cow. What a force of nature that one is. Woo! I was so lucky. If so the talented. two people that scared me the most were you and her. So the two of you working together. <laughs> it's because you were so powerful, you know, and I, it was just, you know, as actors and people. But oh, Morgan, you're so sweet. I'll let you owe you some money. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite She's team with her? Album. Gosh, you know, my, we, unfortunately, they didn't really write us a lot of scenes together. Um, we would have scenes in the kitchen and, you know, three different things would be happening and Rachel Miner would come running in, you know, and oh, I love Rachel Miner. Um, I talked to her and her mom two weeks ago or something. Mm -hmm. um, so lovely. Anyway, um, yeah, so we never really had, to my memory, a lot of sit down, you know, big scenes, unfortunately. And then they, um, you know, wrote the whole story where she died. And so. That's know. when you had some great stuff. <laughs> yeah. And that was, that, and that was actually, it played into a lot of that, that pregnancy storyline that I had, you know, was that I really need my aunt Maureen now and, and she's not here. Um, yeah which I thought was a lovely way to weave it in for the fans too, because the fans were missing her too, just like we all were. And so changing subjects real quick, I would be absolutely remiss if I didn't say like some of the best times of my life happened backstage at Guiding Light. Like just hanging out with these incredible people, incredible people. We were so lucky. That's what I get from everybody. The, the behind the, you know, everybody, you all laugh, and you know what? Laughter is the best medicine around yeah. the world. So, um, Morgan, Stephen Bergman, who's a photographer who you may have met over the years, uh, has pictures of your wedding to Jocelyn on set because you brought one of your children to that wedding. Mm. So I'll send it to you. He's going to send it to me. Awesome. Great. Thank Aww. you. Aww. Really appreciate <laughs> but, uh, it. But talking about working with people, uh, Morgan and Mark, uh, Beth Ellers, uh, you know, both, both of you had, you know, incredible stories, you know, that just worked, you know what I mean? Like it, it that doesn't always happen in, in daytime. You know, what, what do you think? Was it the writing, just chemistry? Oh, it doesn't matter what the writing is with Melissa or, or, uh, Harley, what's her name again? Harley. Harley. Yeah. Well, they had the two Beths on scene, and then they had a character named Beth. I mean, on set. Yeah. You know, so that's I true. No, no, but Beth, I, I mean, like I'm saying, it, it didn't matter what the writing is. You know, 
we if she would elevate whatever she was just a freaking force of nature you know and it was you just had to match it every day you know it's like this gale force wind you got to walk same with melissa just walk into it you know go give it your best you know and i think that's what made things so exciting especially with mark too i mean i'm sure you know you, that friction and the the just what people bring to it you know do you do you know our names or are you just reading them off the screen <laughs> <laughs> hey come on man i'm old now I, I can get some brain farts it has nothing to do with my love for her or anything. what's her name she was one of my favorite people to work with. Beth, Beth is another one who made you a better actress. She was so real, and she could take those lines off the page, and uh, she was so natural and fun. Yeah. And Melissa, I mean, she said it too. The writing was so good. And I, I, I remember you could open up a script, and you could tell who wrote it without okay. looking at the name. Yeah. And, and you know, not only um, uh, what was his name, uh, Peter Simon's wife. Courtney. Um, Courtney. 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 Uh, yeah. Michael Conforti was my guy, man. Conforti. Oh, oh yeah. I love Michael Conforti. Uh, Back then, they didn't like you talking to the writers. Uh -huh. And I used to run into him once in a while. Uh, like, I'd be walking up the West, Upper West Side. And, like, he'd pull, he goes, come here, come here, come here. And he's, like, looking around like, there's, you know, we're being followed. And just <laughs> talk about a, a, a scene we did or where a storyline was going. And I love those moments. I wanted to hang out with him all the time. But, um. For some reason, they really wanted to keep us separate from the writers. Yeah. And Mark, you and Beth got to go to Washington D.C. right to the Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, we did a. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. We did a, um, a little a remote. Thing. Yeah, and um, nothing remote. I was just in Forty Fourth Street. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got to go to San Francisco remote. Wow. wow. Who was that with? Vince. Vince. Wow, oh, right, right. Because I guess the storyline uh, or the show was uh, flailing or something, failing in San Francisco. So they wanted to. That was really fun. Yeah, beautiful. Talk about talk about working with Vincent. Who? You. <laughs> you. you. <laughs> Mindy and Nick. Mindy and Nick. Yeah, that was a great storyline. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Moving wow. on. Kimberly, talk about Tuesday, your daughter. Oh, my daughter. Okay. Talk about your daughter. Remember we went Stop. Yes. Don't uh, wait. Don't take that to the wrong place. This is my daughter. Oh. So beautiful. Awesome. Her name is Tuesday. She's going to be 15. And this is her when she played Queen Catherine in Shakespeare. Wow. Oh, wow. And she was really good. Ooh. And she is nothing I would ever push. She's a, she's a poet and she's a writer and she wants to be like a social justice. She'll be like the next Amal Clooney. Um, she's uh, so talented. She's amazing. My joy. That's great. Josh, do you have pictures nearby? <laughs> Joss, I swear to God, you look exactly the same. I know. Yeah. Amazing. Joss, you know, I'm so sorry I missed so much, and I feel so terrible because I was so looking forward to this, but I missed the ages of your kids. Oh, so 18 and 15, two girls. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, we have, so, I, so my daughter is close to your baby's age, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, this they're the, they're awesome. They're the best. I love having girls. <laughs> Hey Mark, were you and Beth in a Reba video? Some a fan. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Really? Well, uh, we had both left the show together, and um, you know, we dated, <laughs> and so we were living together. Really? And, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> we were. It's about time it came out. Anyway, we were All living right. together, and um, <laughs> and our, our relationship, we, we ended up breaking up, and so she she was living in a guest house in Venice. Um, uh, around Mar Vista, something like that, around there. Um, um, and the the people in the front, the woman in the front, her boyfriend, they were a production company, or and they did music videos. And uh, so Reba was doing a music video, and um, she pitched Harley and Malik basically. And they and, and I guess Reba was cool with it. And so yeah, we flew to Guatemala, and then we were on this crazy bus ride um, up to this volcano, and we're like, we could have done this on the lot at Universal. This is crazy, and People were dropping left and right. They were getting sick. And the first night, our makeup woman was down. I saw her before she left the next day. They choppered her out of there. And she's like, I thought I was going to die last night. And 
we were having these giant scorpions. You, you know, you had when you got in bed and out, got out, you had to shake the, your blankets and your pants, make sure there's no what scorpions was this in them. And afraid? Yeah, <laughs> might as well be. But it was just incredible. It was a, a, a beautiful um, place to shoot, and the, the video is called "End Still." And I play a. They aged me a little. I had gray hair, which was sweet. And um, I know I'm gonna, the minute yeah. I'm done, Melissa. <laughs> and I, I played a. I played a doctor <laughs> on it, and she's my wife, and we have a kid. And I was her, I was, I, I was uh, Reba's ex-boyfriend, who was like with the Peace Corps or something. But one uh -huh. night, everyone's in bed, and me and the crew were sitting up, and we drank tequila every night. I was, I didn't get anything, and I was like medicinal, just drink a tequila, kill anything in there. And all of a sudden, thankfully, our sound guy spoke Spanish because all these rebels came off the mountain. They'd come out at night to go see their families and get supplies, and I look over, and there's all these guys and you know with bandanas and shit before any pandemic uh looking in the window at us and i'm like what the fuck and but we oh sorry so we went out we went out there no that's a spanish word oh. so we went out there and got beer and sat out there and drank with them and they they you know they, they relaxed and they're all they're all like you know like late teens they were young guys but uh it was quite 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 a crazy experience wow <clears throat> wow well you know Alan, that, 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 Alan, yeah, i want to have a do over on that question okay no. no, you threw me a little bit. No, because Vincent, yeah, no, I, Vincent I did, is I a great to... actor. He's a great actor, and that was an incredible storyline. It was a great romantic storyline, and it also how like that whole Nick, Lou, Jack, Alexander. That whole storyline was a phenomenal experience for me. I'm sorry that I didn't answer that you, with that, more. That's quite, I I didn't mean to throw you. You you know that. Um, yeah. One of the fans mentioned that 1992 we won for best writing, and Melissa won the Emmy in '94. What? Congrats, Melissa. What do you remember about that? I remember my brother, because I brought my brother as my date, and they announced my name, and you can't see that my arms were in my face, but I cussed on live television. Awesome. And <laughs> my brother says, leans over and says to me, "Don't trip." Oh, oh, love that. He was worried about you. He was very concerned, very helpful, very helpful. Very, now, very, very. Incredible honor and, you know. And Brian Buffington is texting me. Oh, uh -huh. I know. And who? Brian Buffington is texting me. Oh, he's texting you while we're talking. So, you know, while I look to see what it is. That award show, Melissa, was that in, did it actually go in 95? The, or was that the one that I showed uh, that I didn't have shoes? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember your shoes. And, and Kimberly, talk about what you're doing now, teaching uh, at-risk kids. Oh, yes. So I work in, um, well, I don't know if what's going to happen in the fall, but for the past five years, I've been um, teaching reading to kids that are at risk, kind of falling between the cracks in um, public school for kindergarten and first grade. That's right. So That's right. rewarding Kimberly. and great, loving it, yeah. That's awesome. And, you and so Mal great, Kimberly. Wow, thanks. Yeah, where do you live? Hot ATL, Atlanta. Hot Atlanta. In, in, in Hot Atlanta. Crazy. And Melissa, you're teaching, right? Um, yeah, I've well, I'm I'm still working, you know, mostly doing jobs for friends and stuff. I uh, produced a movie a couple of years ago. Um, I've been teaching at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. Wow. Um, I also was. I've been doing some onset coaching, tons of private coaching. That's really. Oh yeah, and Young Sheldon, I read. Yeah, yeah, I was with Young Sheldon for a while doing the onset coaching for the whole cast. So that was you're, fun. you're you're like Lisa Brown. Yeah, I don't, Lisa Brown was doing that for World Turns and Guiding Light. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Except, yeah. Anyway, yeah, same. Similar, right? Yeah. Onset similar? No. <laughs> onset. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? This is interesting to me. Um, when I was like 12, my little top dance class, we went on a trip to New York for a week, like the week before Christmas. And one of the shows that I saw was 42nd Street. I saw Lisa Brown playing the lead in 42nd Street. And I was in the back of the theater doing all the dances along with her because we had standing room only tickets. 
and I that was, was my first Broadway show. Like me, wow. I, yeah, it was crazy. My first Broadway show was that with my high school class. Crazy, wow. that's crazy. And and Morgan, before we go, and everybody, I can't thank you enough for doing this. Um, Morgan is going to talk about his music, and then he's so kind, and he's going to sing for us. Yay. And uh, you guys, you can all stay when I sign off. Stay backstage so we can say goodbye. But I'm going to let Mar Morgan talk about his music. You can find more about Morgan's music here at that website. And take it away, Morgan. Okay. Talk. <laughs> uh, shoot. Um, well, uh, so I'm a songwriter. I mean, that's what I'm doing a lot of now. Um, but uh, Oh, you know, hold up. Sorry, I'm going to interrupt. Because I, I know that you worked for the LAFD and uh, you were a paramedic and a fireman. So you thank, got you, for doing, so thank you for doing that. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, Wait, what? Uh, it was a lot of My fun. My husband was a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> right, have you guys heard my firefighter song story or uh, song? No. No. Well, I'm not going to play it right now, but there's. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I, I this is this gonna sound so I picked up my guitar before the show, you know, because you said maybe play a song. I thought, okay, sure. Um, I went to my guitar and it sounded like, ah, you know, nails screeching. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. It was so detuned. My daughter loves to go to my guitar and touch <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, she's my little elf. Um, can you guys hear this? Yeah, just get closer to the mic when you sing. The uh, the guitar is fine. It is? Yeah. Because I, I honestly can't hear it, and I don't know why. Um, Mark, what do you think? Should I do the lifeguard stand song? Yes. Okay. So this is my latest song that I just wrote. It's called By the Lifeguard Stand, which my friend came up with, Deborah. Okay, here it goes. Oh my God.
Oh, you are so talented. Oh, oh, that made me cry. That was amazing. Great. Love I love it. that. Love it. Love I love it. your voice. I remember hearing you before in Los Angeles, but man, you have grown. That is that is amazing. Thank you. Well, that remind you. me of Morgan. I remember seeing you do Pippin. Oh my God! Remember that? I, you, I, I remember that. Yeah. 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 No, I feel like you know one of the reasons as an actor, okay, then getting and becoming a paramedic and a firefighter, you know, you have you. Whether you want to or not, you you have to just shut down um, all of your creativeness. I mean, I felt like by the time I left the fire department, my soul had just been sucked out of me. And this was really Is this I, a recording I had to leave. You know? I had to leave. I, <laughs> I, I had to just rediscover my voice, you know, and in both physically and metaphorically, you know, it. Uh, it's been three years now, and I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm coming a long way. Well, you're wow. back. Well, you're well so done. Talented. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thanks. And I appreciate you. So uh, happy do you're doing that. Performing for everybody here today. And truly, uh, it is so good. I haven't seen so many of your faces in a very long time. Marky and I traveled to Virginia decades. You were great, by the way, Ellen. You were terrific. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. Stay backstage. I'm just going to sign off. Love you all. This is so fun. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Everybody, thank Bye, you everybody. so much. Stay, stay here. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Tomorrow we have the cast of Melange with Robert Newman, Morgan Fairchild, Kristen Alderson, Diane DeGarmo, and Eileen Kristen. And next week, another Guiding Light show with Paul Anthony Stewart. Laura Wright and Nancy St. Alban. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.